And we thank you for joining us here on WFXR News at Noon. I'm David DeGuzman. Well, we have made our way 19 miles west of where God's Pit Crew's home base is in Port Charlotte. We're here in Venice, Florida at a mobile home park. And as you can see, the pictures speak for themselves. The damage here is indescribable, but sheet metal in front of nearly every single home in this community. And I remember being here in Charlottesville for Tony Elliott's introductory press conference, and he was talking about how he was looking forward to raising these young men to be prepared for the world after graduation. And in his first year, he now has to deal with this. And as we heard from Hugh Freeze, the Liberty head coach earlier today, there is nothing that can prepare you for a situation like this. Two people are still on the run this morning after a lengthy standoff in Lynchburg. Now is definitely kind of that sleet that those small little pellets just bouncing off of my jacket, frankly bouncing off of my face right now and it actually hurts. <laughs> it looks a little clean right now behind me, right? But uh, they're still cleaning up all of this. All the confetti, a lot of it fell. Now, there's something magical about being here in New York City during the holidays that even for a New Yorker like myself, it's worth going out and braving the cold and the crowds. George Hodson is president of Veritas Vineyards and Winery. There's a lot of vineyards in yeah. this area. What makes Veritas stand out, especially when you talk about the wine? Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I think one of the things we have is 20 years of history. That's right. Three years ago, Matt Tift was racing here at Martinsville Speedway and suffered a seizure. Turns out he was diagnosed with epilepsy. Well, three years later, he's back in a different role as the owner of Team Live Fast Racing. Matt, thanks so much for joining us. Take us back to that day. What was that like and what's it like to be back now? 20 years is still as fresh as yesterday for you, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it does. It just it it is it is hard to believe it's been 20 years. Josh Maddox works here in Roanoke as a financial consultant for Morgan Stanley. But 20 years ago, he was just a 22 year old in New York City and was in the South Tower of the World Trade Center on 9-11. Among those at that rally, one family forced to find refuge elsewhere. The Department of Homeland Security says more than 115,000 displaced Ukrainians have found homes here in the US. That includes one family who found a fresh start right here in Southwest Virginia. David de Guzman has their inspiring story. It's a story you will only see on WFXR News. Kathleen, a year ago, Ihor Mustavi and his family were vacationing in the former Soviet Republic of Georgia. They were days away from moving into their new house in their hometown of Bucha, Ukraine. Then Russia invaded their country, leaving Ihor, his wife Angelika, and their son Alex without a home. It was an air bomb attack and uh, everything was destroyed. A lot of our friends, people who know, uh, they, they was killed, tortured and killed. <laughs> now we're here. Uh, it's a really nice place, but sometimes at the night I wake up and I can't understand where I am. For Angelika Ditkivska and her husband, Ihor Mustave, the last year has been the longest day of their lives. Before the war, Angelika and Ihor were living a happy life in Ukraine with their son Alex. But as Russia invaded, the entire family traveled more than 4,500 miles over four days, eventually stopping in Portugal, where they tried to start a new life. I worked uh, on two jobs, uh, 19 hours per day without day off. I always say to him, we need to do something. We need to do something. We can't stay in here. We, you see, we don't can uh, have a good job. But in Portugal, while working as a bartender, Ihor met Will Barquette, a Botetourt County native who was on vacation. This is the first time I met him. He just seemed like a really nice guy, and I just, I really, just hearing him talk about how they had just lost everything and how he was telling me about how they were struggling to make the to make ends meet in Portugal and different things and I you know I kind of told him I was like look like we've got a lot going on here and I mean like it would be great if you wanted to come you know and um, come to America. The family spent nearly 10 months in Portugal but thanks to the help of Will and his family Angelica, Ihor and their nine-year-old son took a plane across the Atlantic Ocean and ended up here in Fincastle to start a new life away from the war in Ukraine. And I showed him a house and he said, oh, he said, Daddy, is it true that we will have a house again? He was so happy about that. He knew what, what happens with our house. 
and he said, "Is it true?" Yeah, they 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 made everything for us. So we basically had four weeks to get ready for three people and a house and outfit the house. And uh, I made lists, emailed them to area churches, and everything that was on that list was provided. The community and the area churches have been so supportive. It's just great. I mean, they're really just extended family. You know, they're part of our family at this point. They're just so helpful, happy, uh, warm people. I guess we loved them before we really even met them. And, um, and they mean a lot to us. Angelica and Ihor plan on staying in Virginia for the long haul, but they also carry a hope of returning to Ukraine one day. I have a new dream. I hope when war is finished and everything is finished, and one day we can visit Ukraine together because I want to show them Ukraine is really beautiful. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what's happened with me. We want to show how we live, but we happy. It's much easy. We can, you know, we can breathe. We can live. Reporting from the town of Fincastle in Botetourt County, David de Guzman, WFXR News. WFXR's David de Guzman is in Venice, Florida, with a look at the relief effort ramping up and how neighbors are coming together to help. Well, we have made our way 19 miles west of where God's Pit Crew's home base is in Port Charlotte. We're here in Venice, Florida at a mobile home park. And as you can see, the pictures speak for themselves. The damage here is indescribable, but sheet metal in front of nearly every single home in this community. The roofs torn off of so many houses here as neighbors are still picking up the pieces a week after Ian struck. It looks like a war zone. That's the only way I can describe it. It's... Just, it's it's very devastating. It's unreal. I mean, we come in, this park was a beautiful park. We love it here. And then when we came in on Saturday, I mean, I just cried. You know, it's just so upsetting to see so many people lose what they have, what they've worked hard for. How long do you think this cleanup and recovery is, is going to take in your mind? In my mind, I know that it's going to take a while to get, you know, like the roofs and the, the carports because it's, you know, there's so many people have so much damage that the contractors, you know, unless we get more coming in from other states, it's going to take quite a while. What's interesting about this neighborhood is that the majority of the people who live here are snowbirds, people from all over the country who spend their winters here in Florida. And from who I've talked to, neighbors have been helping neighbors, supporting each other throughout this crisis. And now God's Pit Crew is part of that relief effort. Drew Unks will have that part of the story tonight on WFXR News. But for now, reporting in Venice, Florida, David DeGuzman, WFXR News. Now, if you want to help with Ian Relief, we're making it easy for you. WFXR has partnered with the Red Cross for their Hurricane Relief Fund. All you have to do is get out your phone, flip on your camera, and scan that QR code that's right there on your screen. That will take you directly to the donation site. Now, if you'd prefer, you can also find the link on our website, WFXRTV.com. And folks in the Roanoke region have more choices now than ever before. WVXR's David de Guzman visited a few businesses in the area to show us some of the unique and distinct flavors of Latin America cuisine. We want to bring these meals that we had growing up to everybody in the community. What do you think about that rice? I love how it's crispy. If you want to take a quick trip to Peru, all you have to do is take a short drive to Inca Grill in Roanoke where staples like rice, plantains, and potatoes are elevated to dishes that appeal to both the eye and the palate. That's very good. The majority of these meals are, you know, uh, traditional recipes from our grandparents. Inca Grill's owner, Percy Rojas, was born and raised in Lima, Peru before arriving in Miami. And um, he always tells me that he never felt at home. And I asked, I was like, what was it about Renault that you stay? And he always tells me, it's the people. I love the people in Roanoke. I just love the community and the sense of being home when I'm in Roanoke. And with every dish, Inca Grill serves up a taste of family that continues to grow. I think it goes back to that soul meal. You know, it's like something that fulfills your heart. 
and it comes with great conversation like we're having today. So it goes back to, you know, building relationship, building that family oriented atmosphere. While restaurants like Inca Grill have been around for several years, newer places like Delicias Bariquas are adding to an already diverse food scene in Roanoke. It has been crazy. Um, we are very, very excited. The, the response from the community has been just huge. Carina Navarez started Delicias Bariquas originally as a catering business seven years ago. We had a lot of um, new clients, uh, a lot of big events <laughs> for some reason during pandemic. And I guess by word of mouth, we ended up doing like corporate events and uh, we've been expanding ever since. And that brought us here. From a kitchen on the ground floor of an office building in downtown Roanoke, Navarez serves up food from her native Puerto Rico. Let me tell you, the one thing that always sells them is when you open that pan up and they're able to see it and smell it. It's definitely a seller. It's like they said, say no more. With a mix of daily specials alongside Puerto Rican favorites, Navarez is happy to offer a taste of the Caribbean in Southwest Virginia. We had one person that started crying with one of our dishes because she said it tastes exactly like my grandmother's. Uh, it was definitely a blessing. Uh, we were not expecting it. It was just definitely an opportunity that knocked on our door and we said we definitely have to take on it. Places like Delicias Barliquas are a welcome addition to those that already occupy a prominent place in the area's food landscape. Absolutely. I don't see it as competition. I see it as diversity. I see it as now you have an option to come to Inca Grill today or tomorrow, but you have an option to go and try something else. I don't think that it's, um, it's, a, it's a negative thing to have more restaurants with you know, different cultures and different food. From Peru to Puerto Rico, Roanoke foodies have more options to take a trip with what's on your plate. For Hispanic Heritage Month, I'm David de Guzman. Refreshing.